Hi there. This is Bill Earl, and this is Eastern Shore Politics. Our guest today is a candidate for the mayoral office in Salisbury, Maryland, Jermichael Mitchell. Jermichael, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me, sir. I know it's a... Um, this is a, a, a just busy, busy, busy <laughs> time. There's always something else to do, something yeah, else to see. Most definitely. Um, let me ask you a question okay. about uh, recent events, and it has to do with um, your name and your information not being provided on a piece that was touting the, uh, the mayoral forum. Right. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I, I believe it was purposely done. Well, I know it was purposely done. Yeah. Um, a, a group, an organization in this community that calls itself progressive, um, considers itself representing Democrats, um, left us off purposefully. Um, you know, in their group message on social media, in their group chat, it was said specifically that I was, um, I was considered not a candidate. I was considered a person that wouldn't win. Um, and quote unquote, because of some of my past rhetoric, um, they felt like it would be um, not important to uh, publicize me as a candidate um, on their page. That's a pretty judgmental position to take. <laughs> Very judgmental position to take, especially for uh, for people who say they're about people, right? For people who say yeah. they want people to stay informed, right? When you're saying that you're running on transparency or people involved with you are trying to be transparent. Um, it's just, uh, I don't know, it's, it's not surprising from the, you know, right. knowing, knowing who's involved, it's not surprising, yeah. right? Like, we've, we've actually been here with this group kind of sort of before, um, but it's, it's just not surprising. And, and, and then um, to us, it lets us know that we're doing something right, mm -hmm. right, for some of the backlash that has happened and some of the things that has gone on. Um, it just lets us know that we're trying to we're doing something right. Well, it does seem to be part of a uh, a reoccurring pattern of uh, of behavior, doesn't it? Yeah, yes, sir. A, a, but but it's hard to believe that that this is happening. It's also harder to believe that you know one of the leaders who is a um, a candidate in this uh, in this race, you know, was unaware of it. That just yeah. I mean, I think the other piece that was that was difficult for a lot of us was um, saying that you're not a part of something that we all know you're a part of. Yeah. Um, at that forum that evening, um, you know, it was asked if this, if one of the candidates was a part of, yeah, or a progressive, um, part of that organization, LSPC, um, and it was blatantly said, no, I'm not a part of this group, or I'm, you know, not associated with it. Um, but if you go to the through the photos, if you go oh, yeah. to the, the past history of the votes in the past couple of years, um, this person has been tremendously a part of it. Yeah. They've been with them, They've, they're in all the photos, um, and we know that leadership from this group is also a part of her campaign. So, um, it, it, it was just, it was different because we, we promised each other in the beginning that we were what we consider a smear campaign. Right. Right? We, you know, as you saw me and Mr. Taylor, like, we have a great relationship. We talk, we communicate. Right. Um, and we promised each other that we were going to stick to the facts. The facts matter more than anything, and we weren't going to start spewing lies or making things up. Um, and we truly yeah. feel like some people have spread lies through this process, um, and, and their integrity is in question. In question. Yeah. That, that's a very kind way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's pivot a little bit. Yeah, yes, sir. Um, tell me about you. Yeah. Um, I'm a kid from Salisbury, born and raised. I know that's kind of cliche from what we're all saying <laughs> um but i definitely was born and raised here in salisbury um came from a single mother mm -hmm. um so you know i had different life struggles um but i always knew i was better than my circumstances yeah um often through my sports endeavors often through my classroom endeavors even um, my teachers um i had a teacher show up to the past forum which my third grade teacher in that um, call came out yeah man that was like a super amazing and made me feel good Right, because I, I remember, I, I know some people have those stories where teachers told them they wouldn't be anything. And they, uh -huh. None of my teachers really were like that. I had a few maybe, but most of my teachers always told me I was going to be a leader. Right. Most of my teachers always told me that I would do something great. Um, and just to see some of those things come into fruition, man. So, you know, I, I played sports. That was my tout in high school. I played for Butch Waller. Okay. I played basketball at Wacomico High School. I uh, won a state title. And then I immediately got into um, law enforcement, right? Like I'm graduating. I'm thinking about a career. Okay. Um, so I became a county, um, I became a correctional officer for the county jail. Um, did that for a year, worked with adults, and I just felt like, you know, adults are kind of stuck in their ways. Um, so I um, applied for the juvenile center in front 
of the jail, the juvenile jail, which was in front of the adult jail. Right, jail. right. Um, and I got actively involved, man. Worked there for about five and a half years um, and just saw that it was a revolving door um, after that. I got into the education system, um, and I've been all around, man. I've been doing it in the nonprofit sector now, um, but I've worked with kids since I was a kid, um, and it was just always trying to figure out what avenues I could get to make kids who, who honestly look like me or came from situations like mine to understand. Um, you're better than your situation, right? Like, you don't have control over that as a child. Right. No matter how much you wish for it to be better, um, all you can do is when your opportunity comes to make it better. Right? Whether that be schooling, Bingo, yeah. whether that be the job. Like you said, as a child, you have no say. But the moment you get an opportunity to make your life better, you have to take advantage of that. And you can't use the past as an excuse, right? A lot of times people say, well, I've, I've been through this and this happened to me. And this, um, great that that happened to you. Um, look at that as motivation. Look at that as a way to a leg up instead of a leg down, right? Like, So I, I've always been able to look at my life and instead of complaining or crying or murmuring about it, um, I use it as a pushing tool, right? Um, if I want better, I got to go get better. If I want more for my family, then I got to go make more for my family. It, it appears, I think, to the general public mm -hmm. that we don't pay enough attention to our children. Yeah. Uh, that we don't we don't mentor them in a way that is helpful. That we don't get it. You're doing what the rest of us are not doing, <laughs> um, and I applaud you for that Thank you. Thank because you. it's so important. Kids today face such challenges. Yeah. You know, they're so different and so. Um, uh, so much more intense than wh when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, you know, basically the the biggest thing on my plate was you know when's when's dinner, mom. Yeah, for sure. But um, <laughs> you know, today's children are facing magnificent and horrifying uh, futures in in many ways, either from the uh, uh, the inclusion of, of trickle down, you know, from government yeah. people who 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 know that that doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, from climate change, for sure. Uh, and my grandkids, you know, I'm worried about them. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, man. What what I've noticed out here. In the years that I've worked with youth in our community, right here, just in Salisbury and across the Eastern Shore, even um, the more our technology got advanced, mm -hmm. right? Our kids are smart, but they just didn't. They, their interest was lost in certain things, right? right? Like think about how often now you see kids riding a bike in neighborhoods. Yeah, right? we talk about they don't ride bikes like that anymore. When I was a kid, that was a thing, right? That I couldn't wait to get outside and get on my bike. Yeah, um, Saturday mornings, right? Kids couldn't wait for Saturday mornings. Your, your neighborhood was full of children on a Had Saturday morning, right? Had to have a yeah, bike. Yeah, so nowadays kids don't even come outside. They sit in the house literally, and I can't use game systems as, you know, there always was Atari. Yeah. There always did send So game systems have been around for a long time. Yeah. Just kids endured nature more. Kids wanted to be out in the climates, whether it was cold, raining. Um, we didn't care. We wanted to be together. Um, and in today's time, man, a lot of these kids are just, they want to be by themselves. Screens. Right? Yeah. It's more important to be stuck in a phone. Um, and, and, you know, I think about the movie The Matrix. Right? Yeah. Like we're, we're really living in a Matrix time. People yeah. are so stuck online or whatever's going on social media sites um, that they forget to live real life. You know, it's the fastest growing addiction in this country. Digital. Digital is the fastest growing. Yeah, I can believe it. And you know, they haven't caught up, you know, with with alcohol, and they haven't caught up with with narcotics. Right. But you know, it's more widely spread than yes. either one of those. Yeah, most. Of, and you figure the accessibility, right? Everyone, yeah. no matter how old you are, has accessibility to cell phones, right? Oh yeah. You don't need to have that year, two year plan anymore, uh -uh. right? You get access to these services where you know you can have week plans, you can have a monthly plan and have access to the just as much internet as anyone else has access to. So um, that, that is definitely, but I believe that um, we, and I say we as, as in the elders and people who are coming, um, we will spark the minds of some of those future leaders. We will spark the minds of some youth who know that they have to change and they have to continue to carry the torch, right? Uh, politics, it may change a little bit, but it ain't going nowhere. Right. right? It's always going to be involved. Um, and that's one of the things that has happened with this campaign that we're running. Uh, we just want to educate and empower. Yeah. We truly want to educate people on the process, especially our youth, and empower them to understand you, you, know, you don't need those big flashy degrees. You just have to be a concerned citizen right. who sees things not going the way that they should be going and step up and use your voice, use your platforms to make positive action. Do you think people are, um, are reserved, are trepidatory in, in entering 
politics and and po political discussions and and this. Uh, I know in in my family, for instance, my mother in Texas, she won't watch news anymore yes. because she <laughs> says it's just too depressing. Yes. So so she's not the only one. No. Uh, yeah, I know a lot of my a lot of my elders say the same thing right now that that, that the news isn't like it used to be. Right. Um, same with the newspapers. They say it's hard to pick up a newspaper now um, and read it because it's more um, sellable things, more clickbait things, um, more negativity actually. Right. Yeah. Like it's, it's negativity sells. As no matter how much we we want to talk about, it, it's not often that you get the glory of the nice articles in the paper anymore. They don't make money. Yeah, they don't make the money. Um, so she's right. It, it, it is at times media pushes the gloomy of the days um, whereas and we got to stay focused on it. and that's why it's good to stay touted in your community it's good to be active it's good to be out here because then you can see the work of people who are active people who are doing good things and like you say you can turn that news off and have your own news you have your mm -hmm. own stories of positivity because like she said man they they glamorize the negative Oh yeah, <laughs> all across the country, man. Every time I put pick up my phone and put the internet up, it's something negative that pops up first. Well, you know, yeah. there's an entire television network that lives <laughs> on trafficking and fear. <laughs> for sure, for sure. You know, uh, and that's why I think we, we're grateful for media outlets like yours and this, man. Because, like you said, if we don't create our own platforms, yeah, if we don't control the narrative, um, we, we will always be pushed a narrative that that may not fit our lives. That's smart. So, all you people out there, make sure and watch this show. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, and tell your friends to too. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, when you were young and and you were starting to look at, at politics, mm -hmm. what did you think of it? Um, it was crazy at the time, yeah. I'll be honest. Um, during that time period, when I first really got actively in, in the process of politics, um, Mr. Ed Taylor at the time was around. Um, okay. that was, he had 100 good men going on. That was my first time really getting an experience with politics. Okay. Um, Mr. Ed, he was at the county council at that time. Right. Um, and they had an organization at the time called 100 Good Men. Um, and they came in our neighborhood and they did a couple different projects and I just was amazed, right? Like I've never, besides church, um, I never seen men dressed up, right? Like I never yeah. seen men coming together. Um, usually in my neighborhood, it, it was alcohol and drugs, right? When men came yeah. together, you know, street conversation. Um, but these were distinguished men who were coming in our community because they wanted to know the needs. They wanted to know the concerns. Um, his tenure wasn't as crazy. The crazy I'm talking, about, the ten, crazy I'm talking about was, and no disrespect to anyone, um, but at the time Barry Tillman was our mayor. Yeah. Um, and Miss Rachel Polk was on the council. Okay. Um, and back then, man, they they used to have some real heated city council discussions. I've heard time. about this. <laughs> and um, um, that was my first true experience with politics. Because you figure at this time, I'm playing bass sports. Yeah. So we're getting, of course, they've always given citations when you win. Um, so we're receiving citations. So I'm starting to pay attention to politics because we're going up there to receive um, citations. But then I'm also reading those stories about, you know, the arguments and the fist fights and the, you know, the, the court cases amongst our council and our president, right. I mean, our mayor at the time. Um, so that was my true introduction. Um, but I knew Miss Polk and I knew Miss Siggers. Um, and I knew these people from my neighborhood who yeah. would come around and talk to us and ask questions of our needs and then go represent us. At that time, we only had one district um, that was considered a minority district, which was District 1 at the time. Yeah. Um, and at that time, they, they did come in our neighborhoods. They did talk to us. They did ask us questions. Um, and that kind of inspired me, right? Like, it was like, in my I mind, it, it, was in, it was important that someone cared, right? They may not have been able to fix all my problems. Um, but at least they were asking me what my problems were. Right. Right. At least they didn't. They weren't just coming around during voting time as well. That was another thing. Um, just coming around during the voting time. Yeah. Right? Now these people were consistently in our neighborhoods. These people were always a phone call away. Um, and that was one of the things that I can say during that time. Um, it was crazy to see the the negative side of it, but it was good to see the no matter how much she got arguing or they got arguing with each other our representatives would still come back to our neighborhood and they still would talk to us and they still would keep us informed. What do you think kids today think of politics? Um, so, it's funny. Um, me running has sparked a lot of kids' interest. Good. Uh, like me being involved with youth activities and coaching and things. Um, it's often, man, I go to Wahai or I go to different places and young people are talking politics. Mr. Mitchell, I saw you in the forum. Mr. Mitchell, I seen you on TV. I heard you on the radio. Mr. Mitchell, um, you know, what is this about? And, 
It's so many inspiring questions. One young lady was like, Mr. Mitchell, you don't have enough signs out. We need to get you some more. And we need to manage your in the making. So that's what I'm saying. So um, just hearing their ideas or the parents, right? When I go to places and speak um, and kids knowing, again, I, I don't have a degree. So a kid has been struggling in school, right? Hears that someone is running for mayor that doesn't have the big flashy degree. Kind of gives them hope. Kind of gives them an opportunity to understand, hey, listen, I do struggle at times with school. This isn't all the time what's on my mind but that doesn't mean I still can't go do great things um, but it's, it's been ins inspiring I've had so many young people that I've come in contact with through juvenile services that were locked up right. that have gotten their lives in order now they're in their 30s they're in their uh, early late 20s they've never voted in their lives never voted right so it's a lot of people who I'm coming in contact with that are young adults who in their entire lives since 18 till now in their 30s They've never had an interest. You know, it's so interesting that, you know, you hear, oh, well, my vote doesn't count. Yes. Absolutely it counts. Oh, and sure. and in, in a lot of ways, you know, it's kind of a, uh, it's an obligation, you know, if you live in a democracy to do kind of the minimum, which is to cast your ballot. And if if nobody cast a ballot, you know, where would we be? We yes. would, you know, the, the small kind of, you know, extremist groups would control For sure. everything. So yeah. everybody's got to have that voice. Yeah. How do we get them to the polls? You guys are doing I GOTV. Think, I yeah, I think, the, I, think the, I think the misconception is this, and, and it's crazy because I believe in school they got to make sure they break down local politics. When they do the government class, yeah. it needs to go more in depth with the local politics. Oh, yeah. Right? They go with the president and the legislation. The right? Constitution. So, yeah, yeah, they go into all of that. And when they have that conversation and you go through all of that process, right, and then you hear the deafening part of the electoral college, mm -hmm. right, you hear that component, right? And even though we go vote in that in that race, in our minds, our vote, really to our to us doesn't count right until the electoral college is is abolished uh we have a system that is uh, and i hate to use this term <laughs> but rigged i know, know for sure it's unfair for sure so people knowing that um that's when they start saying that oh my my vote doesn't count right yeah not understanding that that there's no electoral college and local votes yeah right like especially in a nonpartisan like this one this is just a straight on the day absolutely show up. Um, not like we had to run a primary to pick which candidate would run in the race. Um, so I just feel like some people are just misinformed. So we have to do better yeah. with our voter education. Yeah. Right? And we have to start educating them early. I learned, and again, I just learned it last year um, during the county council race and the governor race, um, state races, um, that a child can be 16 to register. Mm -hmm. They can't vote till they're 18. Right. So again, something as such as earlier registration, right? Votes going to these high schools, instead of just politics class, sitting these kids down, having mock, right? Every kid can't participate in the SGA. No. You know, you gotta have the grades, you gotta, but it's nothing to say, you know, with the after school program, hey, we're gonna set up a council. We're gonna make one of you guys the president. Yeah. We're gonna have a mock election, right? We're gonna find some campaign candidates. We're gonna find these are creative ideas to make elections fun now, right? Kids get an opportunity to run, they get an opportunity to be somebody. Everybody has a position, everybody's important. That's a different idea to spark the minds of our youth to say, you know what, this was very interesting, this was very fun. Instead of that boring process of, well, come to a county council meeting or come to this meeting or city council, come here, and then they're hearing people who are actively involved. But it's just going over top of their heads. Yeah. Because we haven't made it interesting for them, right? Um, we have to find ways to make it interesting for people. And we have to encourage people from our community to get involved. When you have a dog in the fight, you care more. There you go. You truly care more. That's why I've encouraged. I encourage and I'm still encouraging. I hope the Haitian community at some point in time has people run for the county and city councils. Hope the Spanish and Korean communities in our community. We need true representation on these councils. Yeah. Um, and I truly yeah. believe with true representation, people start feeling more comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that we said is in this race, when we win, um, we're going to start a multicultural board. They have all these Smart. boards. But, Smart. Right? Like, we don't have representation of Haitians on the council. We don't have representations of Koreans and Spanish cultures on the council. Why not start a multicultural board? Something that you can have representation from all cultures meet every other month. Have these people come and bring you your problems. If it needs to be a two-hour meeting, cool. But everybody gets equal time to express the needs of their culture. Claro que yeah. si, senor. Yeah. Um, it, really important. The um, Unfortunately, I think one of the, 
the, the axioms that, that people operate under, which is uh, needs to be dispelled and it needs to be um, eliminated as a barrier, is people think that local government is not as important mm -hmm. as state or federal government, yes. when in reality, many of the things that will affect a family, uh, a, a man or a woman, um, directly and most, um, most judiciously, originate from local government. The, the, the local matters so more. It matters more than anything. Yes, it does. Um, because like you said, your local taxes, your, your local issues, your local uh, environment, things that Where are is the money spent? You. Where is the money spent? And you're being taxed. I truly believe, and I've said this for a long time, and this is what really got me, um, and it's because taxation without representation, mm -hmm. right? If you're paying taxes, you should have someone speaking for you. Dog you should hunt. have someone re re representing you. And if that's not the case, then you should be using your voice and finding out why. And those people who are representing you, if they're not listening, then you got to, you know, check their records. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, you know, they got to check their records. Okay, we've got what, um, 10 days? Yeah, no, we're, we are now officially, um, I want to say for 13 to 12 to 13 days. Yeah, out. okay. Two, yep. Roughly two weeks. weeks. Yep. Roughly two uh, weeks. So you're going to be knocking on doors? Yeah, we're going to be continuing knocking on doors. We're going to be continuing putting out our signs. Um, we're going to have, uh, I believe we're going to have one more meet and greet. Okay. Um, so we're working on that now. Um, and, and then, you know, people, again, accessible, right? We're going to some churches now. I had okay. a couple of meetings yesterday. I'm um, getting with some of the faith-based organizations and, and churches in our community um, just to stand up and speak to their people. Um, and the biggest piece and the biggest pitch is that we want people to be informed. We ain't saying you got to vote for me. Right. We're saying be informed so you can make an educated vote. Don't just so vote because of, yeah, don't vote because of your past history or who your parents used to vote for or what party. No. A lot of people do that. A lot of people do that and we waste our votes that way. Yeah. And then nothing comes about because all we've been doing is voting party lines. Yeah. We haven't been voting for our future. Nope. And that's very vital. So we just encouraging people to be educated and informed and make educated, competent votes. Don't vote just because of popularity or don't vote just because um, it's a woman. Don't vote just because of color right. or party lines. Vote because you heard something that hit your life. Mm -hmm. That's what's vital, right? Because you got to live in the city still. What fits your life? Who's saying something that's moving you and going to move our city forward? The uh, You've got one more meet and greet coming up? Yes. I'm Where is that? Um, so we have one more meet and greet that we're trying to put together. Um, this On October 28th, we have a, a domestic violence and uh, breast cancer awareness basketball game. Okay. Um, it's not being put on by me, myself, but I will be there to meet and greet people. Okay. Um, that's this Saturday at the Salvation Army um, on Oak Street, 415 Oak Street. Um, it's not considered a political event, but because of the people who are putting it on, they're giving me the opportunity to play in the game. Right. Um, so I'll be there meeting, greeting, shaking hands, and talking. They've got a hoop court there? Uh, at the Salvation Army on Oak Street, yes, sir. They got okay. Got there, yeah, yep. So we'll, we'll be on Oak Street this Saturday at a domestic violence awareness game and breast cancer awareness game. Okay, I put um, up a J, uh, Twice in my <laughs> yeah, life, yeah, man. So, yeah, um, and we and you know people come to sports events. So yeah, they do. For like getting pe meeting people where they are. That's the biggest piece, right? Let's not create the world. Let's not go to a building and say, "Hey, meet me here at this meet and greet." And let's do this. Nah, let's go to where people congregate already, right? People are already going to be at that basketball game, so it's vital and important for us to be there. And what time is that again? Um, that game is on at twelve thirty. It's a middle school girls game at twelve thirty, and then the men's game is at one thirty. So, gotcha. big ups to those organizers for even allowing us to come by. Uh, but it's a group called Women for Women. Okay. Uh, and they support domestic violence, and they support also support gotcha. breast cancer survivors. Okay, do me a favor. Yeah. Talk directly to the voter and tell them. What should they be thinking and what should they do? Yeah, um, I would say, in my opinion, right now, you should be getting educated not only on the mayoral candidates, but it's vital that we have a good city council as well. Um, it's vital for you to be educated. It's vital for you to pick up as many documents that you can pick up to read. It's vital for you to check people's voting history if they've already been on the council. Um, and it's vital for you to continue to understand that your voice is your vote. No matter who you choose in this election, no matter who you like in this election, make sure you're listening to the competency. Does this make sense? Does this fit our city? And who's going to have us forward growing? 
it's kind of late to register to vote now. You should already be registered by now. Yeah. Voting opens back up. The registration opens back up November 20th. But we encourage you to make sure that you take people with you to the polls. That's the other biggest piece right now. Take a friend. Tell a friend. Take your coworker. It's from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. November 7th. We really encourage you to have a polling party. Everybody on your lunch hour, take some friends. Go to those polls. Vote for whomever you see as the best candidate that fits your life. And we thank you guys for showing up. Outstanding. Mr. Mitchell, ah, thank you again. Thank you so much, sir. It means a lot. Vote. Don't. Not. Vote. It's important, and it's very important this time around. This is Billy Earl with Eastern Shore Politics. Namaste.